So, um, a recent survey performed by uh, European Bank last year um, covered uh, all countries in Europe with the question, what do you see as most pressing uh, problem for the environment? And they had to choose between different answers. And at European level, this was the result. Plastic waste and climate change are the most important issue today for the people. And that's true for all countries except for Romania, where the quality of air was the most important. Maybe uh, they have another issue with their uh, industry. Um, but no, bioplastic can be an answer for two of that uh, issues, climate change and plastic waste. But what are exactly bioplastics? Are they biodegradable plastics or either bio-based plastics or both? And this is maybe the first added value of a certification body is to harmonize the definition on the market. If we see the loop from raw material to biopolymers, product, packaging, and then biodegradation in compost facilities, for example. It's what we, you, you can see it's a kind of closed loop with some entrance with fossil-based products. When we see, when we look on the right of the, that diagram, it's about waste management. It's what do we do with our waste at the end of the, the, the life of the packaging. While the left side is about resources management. And these are two different stories, two different concepts, and I will explain why uh, more in details. For each of them, there are some logos, some certification schemes. OK Compost, OK Biodegradable, and the seedling logo for end of life, and the OK bio waste or the NON bio based content scheme uh, for the origin of the material. Let's talk about biodegradable and compostable products. Degradable, it's a general term. Everything will degrade one day. But we can speak about biodegradation only if that degradation is performed by microorganism. In fact, making a product or plastic biodegradable, it's the same as to, to make it tasty for microorganism, and they will eat it and transform it. There are other ways to degrade product, but this is not biodegradation, it's something else. Always link a place where that biodegradation occurs. Biodegradation as a generic term, is, it's, it's not senseless. It's biodegradable in the soil or in the sea or in compost facilities. And for each of them, we have developed a certification scheme and a logo. Now let's see how we can make different categories. The first one is about the place. The three first OK Compost Home, industrial and OK Biodegable Soil, are in the, on, on the ground, on the soil. It's static. You have microorganisms, you have fungi, you have a lot of activities. While the two others are in water, you have movement, but you have less microorganisms, you have less activities. The two first, OK Compost, we call them managed end of life. Somebody collect the waste, compost it, and take the compost at the end of the process. While for OK Biodegradable, you just drop the product in the nature, and the nature will perform the biodegradation. Another way to make a difference is about temperature. Industrial composting, it's really the paradise for microorganisms. You have moisture, temperature, a lot of activity. While biodegradation in sea is the worst, lower temperature, lower microorganism activities. For each of them, we have associated, based on standards, existing standards, a delay for biodegradation and a delay for uh, disintegration, if it makes sense. Now, when we speak about compostability, in fact, there are four main characteristics. 
via the Godebo, not ecotoxic, and no heavy metal. This is linked to the material. While disintegration, the ability to disintegrate, is linked to a product made of a biodegradable material. And remember that the two first, biodegradable and disintegrable, are linked to the place where that disintegration or biodegradation occurs. This is checked by test in different laboratories. We do not perform the test by ourselves. We have a network of laboratories recognized by us and they perform the test for us. And this is the second added value of certification body. We evaluate, we measure. It's not based on feeling or perception or, oh, it's nice, oh, so it's biodegradable. No, we make the measurement for that. What is the market for such product? Usually, it's short life product, thin product with some waste, uh, some food waste or some food residues. And that makes sense to send such a product to a compost facility. It's a nonsense to send a, a catering, a tray with some salad or some, some, some cheese to incineration because what you will, uh, the, the energetic cost of that is very, it, it's stupid, you will, you will burn and you will pay to burn a salad or cheese because a lot of lev uh, a high level of water in, in these products. Let's go on the left side, resources management. And you can see here, what is the exchange between the hearth and the hair on carbon dioxide, emission and use of carbon dioxide. And in black, you have the natural exchange. And in red, you have the human activities. And you see immediately that the issue is that what we emit today in the air is not used by the, uh, the natural after all. And that's the origin of that diagram published by Al Gore, made uh, famous by Al Gore more than uh, 10 years ago. It's the, slow increase of carbon dioxide in the air. Just imagine that tomorrow we stop to use fossil resources and we only use bio-based resources. The curve will not decrease. It was just stabilized. <coughs> to decrease it, we need to change completely our way of working, our way of consuming. So, Biomass needs carbon dioxide to grow. That's, bio, that's photosynthesis. And it seems not so difficult to make oil from that. You just need some time and some special condition, but time, first of all. And based on that, you can produce polymers. And our issue today is that we emit the carbon dioxide today based on product using carbon dioxide a million years ago. And that's the reason why that curve is increasing. And in fact, biochemical industry is just a shortcut. We don't need to wait millions of years. We can do that, that in a very short delay. And as a certification body, our question is how many is coming from the chemical industry, let's say classical chemical industry, and what is coming from the biochemical industry. And there are some techniques to do that. Um, just imagine a product with two components. One is PLA, three grams, for example, and seven grams of polypropylene. According to your first feeling, what is the bio-based content of such a product? 30%? More? Less? In fact, we can say it's 30%. And there is a standard based, a European standard, explaining how to make the calculation and the measurement. But another way to see that is based on the carbon content. And in PLA, carbon represents 50% of the weight of the product. While in polypropylene, it's about 86%. Means that if you make the calculation, you have only 20%. 
This is what we call the bio-based carbon content. And there is another standard as well for that, that way to measure. And we use it as certification body because it's much more easy to make the measurement and to make the monitoring of the product on the market after round. While for the first one, you need to know the complete definition, the complete composition of each component, each constituent of the product. Just imagine a complex product like a car. What is the bio-based content of the car? It's, it's really, really, really difficult and very expensive to measure. And there is some certification scheme for the bio-based carbon content and for the bio-based content. Of course, some industry prefer the, that one because the, the level is higher, but that's very, very difficult to measure. For the bio-based carbon content, we have defined minimum level of carbon fraction and bio-based content, and according to the level, we allow one, two, three, or four stars, just to make the communication more easier for people, for buyers. These are the tests. Um, quite complex test, faster than biodegradation, because for biodegradation you need some months here, you need just some, some days to make the measurements. And these are the products. And the scope is broader. Everything can be bio-based. There is no limit. I saw you show you already that, that one. I will not take a long time. I will just add one more step. It's that one called oxofragmentable. So it's a kind of additive you can add to polyethylene, bio-based or not, and make it disintegrable, but not biodegradable. And that makes a big difference. And in the future, that kind of additive will be banned in Europe. So, bio-based, biodegradable, in blue it's end, or in green it's end. Now, what is the added value of a certification body, and what, is, what about the communication? So, the first we is a certification body, inspection body. Uh, it's fully independent, no share order. So, we are really independent. We can decide it's according to the standard, it's, com it's complying or not. If you see the flow chart of a or simple flow chart of an assessment, the first thing is, of course, to make the assessment. Does the product comply, yes or no? If yes, then we will issue a certificate. We will publish some information on our website. Uh, not all, of course, not confidential information, but at least the certificate number. The, the, the trade name of the product, the company name, and we will start the monitoring. And I will come later on the monitoring. And that's the third added value of a certification body based on an harmonized definition on measurement. We certify. We certify that the product complies with a standard or with a scheme. If you see a test report, the technical content is very, very complex. It's 100 pages of diagrams of values tables, a lot of confidential information, not easy to understand. Based on that, we will produce an assessment report based for a certificate and at the end, a logo. Of course, the technical content of logo is zero, but it's easy to understand. And we can always make the link between the logo, the certificate, the assessment report, the test report. So in fact, a conformity mark translates complex technical matters in easy to understand message. And that's the third added value of certification body. It's communicate. Maybe it's the fourth. OK. So. As certification body, we are faced to a lot of different applications. Is it possible to certify SOX? OK, biodegradable marine. Does it make sense to certify toys being compostable at home? These are the kind of questions we receive weekly. 
And so we try to define a policy, and we are working on it, to define a policy to what is certifiable, what is not. And we have different level. Yes, it's certifiable, no problem. Then the second one is, yes, it is, but maybe with some additional technical requirements. Then yes, it is, but with communication restriction, it's not allowed to communicate everything about that. Or at the end, no, it's not certifiable. And I will give you three examples. The first one is packaging for fruit and vegetable. Is it compostable? Yes, it is, makes sense to certify. Can we issue a certificate, okay, biodegradable soil, for example, for packaging? Answer it clearly, no, we will not. Because this is giving a bad message to the end user. He will think that biodegradable means, okay, I can just drop it and it will disappear. That's not always the case and it's giving a bad message. So we will never certify packaging as being biodegradable. A shell for a mobile phone. Is it compostable? Does it make sense? No, this is not a normal end of life for such a product. Nobody will say, okay, I put that product in the, the green bin, it's a nonsense. It makes sense to say this is bio-based. Same for the dashboard of your car. Is it compostable? It's a nonsense. Nobody will take the dashboard of your car and put it in the green bin. Mm -hmm. Saying, is it bio-based? Yes, it is, makes sense. And the last one is much more complex. It's tire. What about the tire itself? Is it possible to certify a tire being biodegradable in the sea? Honestly, no, we do not want to promote just the people, okay, I throw the, the, my tire uh, in the sea or on the beach or in the, in the forest. But you have to know that the dust of tire is one of the most present bioplastic in the sea. Same for textile fiber. A lot of textile fiber are finishing in the sea. Does it make sense to have biodegradable textile fiber? For sure. Can I put a logo on my shirt? Okay, marine? Surely not. We are working on that one and we have not yet a definitive answer. Now, if I look to a com quite complex product, paper, uh, paper bag for bread with a window, bioplastic window, biodegradable window. You have different components. You have the raw material to do the film. You have the paper, you have the ink, you have the glue. These are different companies produ producing these different constituent or components. And then you have the converters making a film with the resin, or printing the paper with the paper and the ink. And then you have a company assembling the bag assembling the film, the paper, with the glue. Of course, that company cannot be responsible for the certification or for the conformity of the glue because they have no action, they have no power on the, on the production of that glue. So we will certify the different components, the different intermediates, and we will certify the finished product based on the different certificates. And usually the tests are performed at the, that level. Biodegradation, disintegration, ecotoxicity, heavy metal on the paper, on the resin. And if the resin fulfills the requirement for a certain thickness for disintegration, then the film in that, in that thickness will be certified without additional testing. And we will perform the monitoring on the finished product because at the end, it, what it is important is that the finished product finishing in that end of life stream is certified and comply with the standard. We will perform the monitoring on that level. 
And that's the fifth added value of a certification body, is during the life of the certificate, we will perform a monitoring on the market. We will take some samples and check if they are still the same as the certified one. So, if you go home with a few messages, this is the first one. It's not because uh, biodegradable, sorry, and biobased are two different stories, two different concepts. And it's not because you are one that you are automatically the other. Biodegradation and disintegration are always related to a specific environment. It's not because a product is made of, set of certified raw material that the product is automatically certified. We need to perform some assessment for the thickness, for example, for the printings. And a certification body gives some confidence, some value to the uh, statement. So, as usual, education first. And that's why I'm here. For, I'm here, in fact, for two reasons. To explain what we are doing and to ask you, if you find some samples on the market, just send us to help us, to support us, to perform our monitoring activity. Thank you very much.